Uh, we're going to start off in a bit of a strange spot, which is that for thinking about division, I want us to begin by thinking about multiplication. Okay? Now, the reason why is because, as we've said a couple times before, multiplication and division are two sides of the same coin. Okay, you're just looking at it from different angles. So if we know stuff about multiplication, which we do, right, we can use that to understand division. So let's just do this, this product, okay? Can we work out what this is? Can you talk me through how you might do it? Yeah, brother. Well, first of all, I times six by three. Okay, pause, okay. Six times three, how are we with our tables? In fact, I think I've got it up there, right? What is it? 18. 18, very good. So what do I do with that? I put the eight um, in the answer column, and then I put the one over the five. Yep. Then I times five by six, which gives me 30. And I add the one above it. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Well done. So I think most people are comfortable with that. Even if you did it a different way, I think you'd still end up with 318. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to borrow this family of numbers and use them to demonstrate how to do division. Okay? And some of you, I hope, have seen this before, but that's okay. We'll all get on the same page up. So I want to work out 318 divided by 6. Now, we know what the answer is. It's right there, okay? But I want to show all of you, do you remember I talked about in the, in the bookmark how it's important to set things out properly? I'm going to show you how I would set this out, okay? So having written all of this down, here's the way I'm going to approach this, right? Okay, hands up if you've seen a symbol or a shape like this before. Hands up straight. Hands up straight, hands up straight. Okay, outstanding, hands down. So we will be able to go through this um, in a lid, right? What do we do here? I'm reversing this process, right? So I want to say, not multiplying, but how many sixes can I fit in each part of the number, right? Now, not a trick question. How many sixes can I fit into three? Yeah, Aiden. I can't fit any sixes into three, right? So bad luck, but that's okay. If zero is how many sixes I fit, then zero is what I'm going to write down. There's my first step, okay? Someone suggest what I go to the next key. Um, put the three down next to the one and make it 31. Okay, so this guy comes along for the ride. Remember, I didn't get to use that three, right? It wasn't very useful, but that's okay. I'm going to hold on to him. It tags along just like this one tagged along with the five before, okay? But in a slightly different way. So this is 31 now, this number. 31. How many sixes can I fit into 31? Someone hasn't seen anything yet. Charlie. Five, one. Five, very good. So I've got five sixes in there, but then I've got a kind of number hanging off. So I'm going to write, I've got five that I've used, and then I've got that extra one that was sort of parting off along the end. Now I get to the end. How many sixes are in 18? Yes, that's three, very good. And I've reached the end, which of course we knew was the answer, right? Very good. Now let's extend this a little bit. This is a nice number. It went in evenly, it divided perfectly. But not all numbers will do this, right? So let's have a go at this. Some of you might be able to see this number is not going to go neatly. Um, it's not going to divide perfectly by 5. Next lesson, we'll talk about exactly why we can see that instantly without doing any work. But to begin, I'm going to put in my notation here so you can see uh, division happening. And I'm going to ask the same questions. Okay, How many fives can I fit into one? Yes, Aiden. One, oh, zero. Into one. Zero, again, thank you. So I'm going to write zero up there. Okay. Um, the one, because I didn't use it, it sort of comes along for the ride. Yeah. So how many fives can I fit into 19? Yes, Ria. Three. I can fit three. Now, once I've taken three of the fives out, it's 15 in total. So what gets left after this number? Really? Four. Four. Very good. So that's what's left over. And I'm going to continue this process until I get to the end. Okay? So let's actually just quickly do this. Uh, how many fives in 46? Uh, yeah, Aiden? Nine. Nine fives. And there's how much left over? Nine. There's one left over. And lastly, how many fives in 14? Two. Two. And there is? Now there's four left over, and I've got no more spots to put them in. So I put them up here, I write an R to say that's what's remaining, that's what's left over, the remainder, and I'm done. So 392 
This is my answer, Marley. Oh, did you do just four out of five? Yeah. Okay, now, we will talk a little bit about what we end up doing with this four later on. We can do a few different things with it. For now, I'm happy just to leave it there. It's the remainder because it remains. Now, if you have another colour, please label with me. There are one, two, three, four parts of what we've just written, and they all have names. It's great to have names for things because then you can describe rather than saying, hey, you know, it's that thing with the guy in the place, and no one has any idea what you're talking about. Okay, so they all have names. Let's describe them. Does anyone know what the five is called? It starts with a D. Anyone? Yeah. Divisor. Divisor. Very good. It's what you're dividing by. Okay? There's another thing that starts with D. This one here, it's got a very similar name. Does anyone know? Yeah, he's confident. Yeah. Dividend. It's the dividend, right? Some of your um, parents might own shares, and dividends are the things that get shared out to everyone, right? Like literally shared. It's a big sum of money, and it gets divided up for a whole bunch of people. Then we've got two last things. One that starts with Q, and one which I think you already know that starts with R. We'll do the easy one first. Starting with R is? Pub remainder. Remainder. And the last word. You have a funny one starting with Q, Maria. Question. Question, fantastic. Language is all about trying to be able to communicate an idea, not just in my head, but to you, so we all know what we're talking about. So that's why we give names to all these things. Okay. I just want to point out, I remember we started with the review questions, right? Everything you know about multiplication, all these things, will come in handy as you divide. Like, as I thought, oh, how many fives are in 46? If you know what 9 times 5 is, you can do that just like that.